grown up. I've got one up here. Yeah, I'm not going to use stone up here. How are we looking? Have we shut down? Have we? I, I don't know. Came off? Um, Wayne, Wayne's saying it's, is it just me and not getting on to. And, uh, Gremlins. Derek, Derek says Gremlins. Okay. All right, something's happening now. Good. Yes, we were in. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where we are in the process, folks. I think we've made a, a little blunder here. There's something something happened, or it, it, it closed off a little bit. Um, the surf's up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good on you, Mike. <laughs> okay. so, um, so what I've done so far, I just want to re reiterate a little bit, go over things. Yeah. What I've done is I've cut a base in the bottom of my my trench. Uh, a, a, I've cut a um, I've cut a um, trench in the bottom of my little box. Can't hear? Yes. I don't know what's happening yeah. there. I've got it. Okay. It's happening here. I've got sound on here. Yeah. Got sound here, guys. Yeah, it's just Bill. Bill can't hear. We're about to you, Bill. Voice is good, Mike, but in Australian. Oh, okay. okay. All right. We'll carry on. I think it might be Gremlin at your place, Bill. <laughs> All right, let's let's see how we go again. All right, we're back to where we were. I've cut a little a, a trench in the bottom of there. I'm sorry if you missed a little bit of that, but anyway, we'll we'll work it out as we go. Now we we knew at this. We've got to get some gremlins. So what I've done is I've developed a little tool that um, allows me to cut all my round corners for the boxes. So this is what it looks like. Just give me a sec. This is what it looks like. A little sander and I have a little pad that sits on the top there and all I'm doing there is just sanding into the corners. Okay, so that's all it does. So when we turn that on, turn it over. Yep. And so what we've got now is nicely rounded over corners. So our next thing to do is to assemble and glue the box together. Now I'm not going to glue it together because we've wasted so much time fiddling around trying to get started. But what I'll do, I'll go into the next task. Now when we pull a box apart, it's always a good idea on the bits. It's always a good idea to support the box while you're doing that. So as you can see, sit it on there. If you reef that apart, you'll find that um, it'll flick apart and then it won't go back together properly or it'll have gaps around the edges and you'll damage up da damage your timber so lots of support while you're doing it now I'd pull that apart and then I'd glue that back to where we were and you can see I've got that lovely little trench around there and it's just a matter of sliding our piece of material in Pop in like so. And then we just pop the other top on. Okay, and we have a tiny little bit of movement in there, which is what we want, so that the box doesn't actually fall apart. And there's our, our base. 
So our next step is to cut some feet in it. That took 15 minutes. So when we cut the feet in it, let me change things. How are the comments going there, Pammy? When I cut the feet in the bottom of these, I use the TSR 12 spiral bit. It doesn't matter whether it's up cut or down cut, basically because you're cutting across the whole of the piece of timber, the whole of the edge. It's not like you're trying to cut a trench. Let's pull this apart. There's my bits. One of the things that I generally do is I mark a couple of the joints that are going together so I make sure that they all go back together again in the same place. And then we're ready to go. So quickly, could you please tell um, viewers about the rebate cutter? What the, the top ah, that's, the that's, that's a good thing. Thank you, Pammy. That's a good thing. The rebate cutter, this one here, cuts a trench four millimetres by five millimetres deep with the bearing that it comes with. So its diameter is 22.3 millimetres, which again, like I said earlier, was about the same size as a 10 cent piece. This is one of the, bear one of the router bits that comes in what we call our ultimate cutter kit. Okay, So if you bought an ultimate cutter kit, you would get this in there with the bearing. There's my bearing, there's my 19 millimetre bearing. Okay, so you would get that as well. So they work in tandem. When I'm cutting my first cut, I put the big bearing on, give myself a little cut right around the inside of the thing and just start the cut. And then I go back to the little bearing and cut all the way to my five millimetres. And as you can see, it's a lovely clean cut, lovely clean trench, like so. Okay. So you can buy them individually if you wish. But now back onto our feet. What we're doing now is just adjust the height. And you can see I'm a little bit above. Doesn't really matter how far above, it's as long as it's uh, just a small amount, you don't want too much. Now the diameter on that router bit is 10 millimeters. So keep that in mind when you set up to cut your feet. You'll need a fence, so I just have, my fences are just radiata, um, I, I, they're, they're, they're designed basically to basically be a bit, a bit sacrificial, so all we do is cut them. I do lots of stuff on them, I, I tend to write on them because if I'm standing here working on the, on the equipment and somebody calls me, I can write in messages and stuff like that. So I just run it through the drum sander every time it uh, gets a bit daggy. If, um, if it gets too, too daggy, I tend to uh, throw it away and, and, and start again because they're not that, uh, they're not that expensive when you just a piece of radiata run through the, through the, the thickness of... Let me see here. Okay, so what we're going to do now, going to set, if I can get in a bit closer here, going to set the height, I uh, set the, the, the depth of cut to halfway across the router bit, which means that there's five millimeters of router bit exposed. You have to remember that on your foot, you have six millimeters to play with. So what we want is at least two millimetres of material underneath to support the base. So if that's five millimetres, and we bring it another millimetre, just do it by eye. There's no need to sort of stress over how deep you cut it because all you're doing is creating a shadow line underneath the box. 
and you're lifting the middle of the box off the bench or the middle of the foot. So all you need to do now is push against that and then just move along. Always go right to left. The router bit will spin in this direction. Spins around in the circle. It will go... I'm just looking for another tool. And then what we need to do, we need to work out how long we want our feet. So grab a pencil. So on a rectangular box, I don't have one close. Yes, I do. On a rectangular box, you have your feet. Let me show you down here. You need to make sure that you've got visual effect, a nice visual effect on your feet. Um, so on a short end, we have short feet. On a long end, we have long feet. On a square box, they're both the same. So there's no setup here. Just if I do, say, 20 millimetres, and I only guess at it. You don't have to be, again, prescriptive about that. What we need to do now is line up that edge or that mark with the right left-hand edge of the router bit. You can see that. No, can't see that. Believe me, that's what's happening. So we then put a stop at the end with my trusty Bessie clamp. I'll put that in there. Now what I'm going to do, I'll move the camera around to the other side so that you can actually see what's going on. Bear with me folks, be right there. That's probably a better, a better view. Okay, now all I'm going to do now is push against there and move along and I'm only going to go about halfway. You must. So what I've done there is I've just gone halfway along. To get the other side done without having tear out, you can see there's tear out here. See how that's happened there? I don't want that tear out to occur on the foot. So if I flip my piece of timber over, start again you can see I have a nice little foot you can see the shadow under there a little bit of overlap there it's just a matter of cleaning that off and so if you do that to all your parts particularly with a square box it goes like this Now I would glue that together. I'm just going to take all this stuff off here because I probably won't be needing it for the rest of the show. Get it out of the way for you. Yes. Climb route on the first cut. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Ah, oh, somebody was looking for. Yes. Inquire about how to the direction of the tie. Okay. Your climb route is uh, going with the rotation of the route a bit. When you're using your, your rebate cutter, when you're doing that first cut, I always climb route, which is going with the rotation of the route a bit, rather than against it, which is your normal technique. And when we're cutting a deeper cut, 
we go against the rotation of the router bit, which is the, the, the recommended way of using router bits. Always go against the rotation of the router bit. Climb routing tends to try and pull it out of your hands. You can feel that happening. So it's always a good idea to be, be well aware of which way you're, you're, you're cutting. Now, I would glue this together. So I would put my two parts together that I had marked. That's these two parts. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. And once I've glued that together, I have my little box. And you can see the feet in the bottom. It's created a nice little shadow line underneath it. You've got four points of contact on the bench. And it just it adds a little feature to the, to the, to the box. Now, when you're using plain timbers, this one here looks quite nice because of uh, silver ash and rose mahogany. If you're using plain timbers, sometimes you need to jazz it up with a bit of shape or a bit of design work. One of the things that I do with them, there's another one here that I, that I made earlier, and this one here again, camphor laurel and Queensland Leichhardt, same principle, little feet on the bottom. There's no, there's no set measurement as to what you do with your feet. You can do them any which way you like. But again, this one's been rounded over on its corners. So just soften the timber just by taking out some sharp edges. Now, the other thing that we do, that I'm going to do, is this. You can see I've cut away the corner. And the reason I cut the corner away looking at this bit yeah. Yeah. it's fine so put the camera back to where it belongs so that's this is what we're going to do with it you see I've cut away the corner right? it's all rounded over and the reason I do that is because all my short pencils are so far down in the bottom of the box I can't get them out but if I've got a bit cut away the, the short bit will the short pencil can sit in the in the gap okay just like that so i'm going to show you how to do that it just adds a little bit of class to our um our little boxes particularly when they're uh plain timbers this one here is new guinea rosewood um and it, it, it's relatively plain doesn't look much so add the feature make it look pretty okay now there's a technique involved in this shift some of this stuff this is one that I put built earlier. You can see I've got all my parts and there's my little base. I've made the box and what I want to do is I want to shape it. So to shape it, I first of all have to come up with a design. Now that design there happens to be that shape. Can you see that? Like so. Okay, so that's that shape there. <coughs> Draw that shape on the box where you want. Like so. My pencil. And so what we've got is the shape that we're going to cut away on the, on the box. That's after we've built the framework. Now, how do we cut that out? We make a little jig. And so what I have here is parts for a little jig. I started out by cutting the same shape on here. It's back to front. So I've cut the same shape on my, my jig base. Then we have to put some stops on it. Make sure I've got this around the right way. And I'll screw that together. All will be revealed.
So a couple of screws. And my stop on the end. What we need to do is make sure that this is square in here. And I did that earlier. My screws. I put plenty of screws in because I don't want it to move at any, any stage. Okay, so there's my little jig. And if you sit that on there, you can see that there's my shape. I put my jig on there. I put my, my piece on there, I can actually cut away all of this material using a router bit. <coughs> now, the router bit that I'm going to use, for those of you who have the A10, is my TGAS, which is the straight bit out of my, my dovetail kit. Just do this up. And set the height. Just put it there. You can see that the bearing will actually rub on the piece of timber. And that will sit on there. And the cutter, which sits a little bit above that, will actually take away that material. Now, I want to show you on a little drawing. I'll just pick up something here. It's important that when you just get my other pen you have a look at this this is the shape that we wanted to create this is my piece of timber with my dovetails in the side my feet in the bottom and my trench these lines here symbolize the grain direction when you're cutting this what we need to do is take a little bit at a time off like so if you cut against the grain, when you get over here, you can see that where the grain meets the edge of the timber, there is no support at the top edge between that little bit there. Okay, so there's no support whatsoever, and you end up with tear out all the way along there. So what we need to do is we need to follow the grain. So we take off small amounts. Don't try and take a whole lot at once. So we just keep cutting away, cutting away, cutting away until such time as we get our shape. Okay, so we end up with that. And we'll end up with our shape. And that will give us the design that we, re we require. Now, because we've got a jig, we can actually, and all of these are the same size, we can cut all the parts to make the two corners meet together. All right, I hope you understand that little bit. I used to do that when I was in school. Okay. So, I can actually hold that quite steadily because I've got my stops here and here. I can hold that with my fingers quite easily and, um, and just cut away little bits at a time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you another, another little trick. What I've done is I've put on one of these little toggle clamps. Let's go to here. There's a little toggle clamp. And when I put my piece of timber on there, I can lock it down and it's quite safe on, on the clamp. So as you can see, it's quite a nice little jig and you can use it over and over and over again. When you do cut your jigs, just make sure that the, the shape you've got is perfect every single time and stays that way, okay? You look after it. You can buy these from Carbotech. Uh, um, there's lots of them around, so there's a whole range of different sizes, so you can, you can pick and choose the ones that suit the work that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so we're going to cut that. Before you start cutting, choose the two pieces that you want to join together, so these two bits go together. So what I want is this part and this part to be removed. So I can just give it a bit of a, a mark there, put a big cross in here, a big cross in there. And they're the two parts that I'm going to use. I'll shift that out of the way. And 
sitting that one there face up, so the inside is up. This one will be the other way, because I want to take off that corner. And we'll just route that out of there. see I've got my shape and because I've gone with the grain that's really really nice and smooth in there now this is the two parts that go together you can see so what I have to do is take off this corner so if I put that one face down Check that out. Nice, neat. Now I've got two of them. And when you put them together, look at that. They fit and they match up quite nicely. And then it's just a matter of putting the rest of the box together. I'll put that there. I've got my little base that goes in there. And then it's just a matter of gluing the whole thing together. And I don't have the time to actually glue it together, but we've ended up with a box with a corner cut out of it, just like so. Now to make that a little nicer, what we're going to do is we're going to round off all the edges. So here's one I made earlier. This one is um, exactly the same. What I've done is glued the whole thing together and sanded off the protruding dovetails because remember when you do them you can see that the dovetails stick through each other there a little bit you need to get rid of that before you start rounding over and that's done after you glue it so rounding over I'll put our jig aside and the rounding over bit that i'm going to use is that one okay so it's a tiny little one it's um the T506B a half, if you're a technical person. It's um, a, a Carby Tool product. The radius of that is about 3 16th. If you're using bigger boxes, you probably need to use a bigger rounding over bit. Um, you can, you can be, get various, <coughs> various um, sizes. And rounding over, just a simple task of just running off to the edges. Now when you start cutting, always start from the centre of the, the top of the router bit. Just drop that down. What I'll do is I'll drop that down to just under there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to run through and do all of my corners. And then I'll do the top edge.
So, <clears throat> now we have the finished little box. It's just a matter of sanding, polishing, and um, getting them up nice and neat. And this is what they look like when they're polished. This one here, I've cut the two sides away and then cut the front off it. Same box, same shape, same design. And when you put them together, you can see, I'll give you this nice little pattern. I did have another one. So you can do different things with them if you like, whatever. But they look a little bit, they look quite nice little box once they're all done up. And a very good little gift. Don't take a lot of effort to do. But what they do is they lift your skill level a little bit because you're, you're learning new skills, putting feet in, putting trenches in, um, shaping and making little jigs and so forth. So all of that stuff is, um, is, uh, is, is very valuable to you. So down the track. So that's a couple of things that you can do with that little box. Here's another one. This one here is a little bit shorter, exactly the same process I went through, but instead of that, I made myself a lid for it. Okay, so it's just a quite a nice little neat little box and a little knob for the thing. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we go into other things is this is what you can do with the bigger ones. You'll see I've got I've added some feet to the bottom of it and it looks really, really nice. So you can do all sorts of things with them. Boxes are, are, are really, really good to do. Now, so that's our pencil boxes. What I want to do is uh, talk to you about another package that we have. Now, the other package is what we call a box maker starter pack. Last week I showed you the solo pack. This is a solo pack with extras. Now the extras you get in it, I'll just pull all this stuff over here for you. The extras you get in it are, you get a pair of clamp holders. I showed you those, they sit on the end of the jig to hold the clamp, hold it. So they make a bit of room here. Shift the things out of the way. So you get your clamp holders, right? So you get a solo jig with a pair of clamp holders and a Bessie clamp. So you've got all the bits and pieces for that. But with it, you will also get what we call our ultimate cutter kit. I've got about 15 minutes folks, so I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of stuff. The ultimate cutter kit comes in a box like that. Okay, and in the box you have all these bits. Let me go to a different camera. You've got all of these bits. Gosh, look at the bench. There we go. So we have, have these, not that one, we have these bits. You'll get five bits. The first one, you saw me use that just a moment ago. Well, some of you did anyway. And if you didn't see me, I explained it to you how, how to use it. We um, have this made by Carbitool. It's a, it's a Gifkins only product, so you, you it's one of ours. It's one that Roger Gifkin um, developed down the track. And we use it in conjunction with our big bearing. Where are we? Where are we? So we use it in conjunction with the big bearing. The next one we use is this one, a spiral bit. I'll have to go to a different camera. This is, try that, the spiral bit. Now the spiral bit is what we use to cut the tops off boxes. So if I was making a desktop box like this, what I want is I want all my joints to be exactly the same size. 
So I expand a joint. Now when we cut the top off, if you don't expand the joint, you end up with two little short joints. Okay, so they, when you put the box back together again. So we expand the joint. So when you do expand the joint, you expand it to the diameter of the router bits you're using to cut the top off. You could be using a table saw or a band saw. I, I, tell, I use this because then I don't have to move away to, to another machine. Um, so I'll use this instead. Four millimetres, expand the joint for four millimetres, use that to cut the top off. Gives me a nice accurate cut all the way around the box. You then get, you also get a tenon cutter. Now the tenon cutter has got square shoulders on it and I use that to, I've lost my box, I've lost the box. Ah, here we go, this one. I use my tenon cutter to cut the square corners on the lid. So it's nice and square and make it exactly the right shape to fit in the box. So I use the tenon cutter for that. With the next one is our panel raising bit and I use that to cut the rebate for the lids. Sometimes I'll use it for the base, but generally for the lids. It's a rounded curve. Uh, it gives you a nice little curve around the box and um, it gives you a, a nice, neat looking shape into the box. Right, so that's what I use my tenon cutter for. I also use it for the bigger boxes around the inside of the lids and so forth. And then I have my slot cutter. The slot cutter is one that I use, thank you, Pammy, is these are frame. The panel is rebated into the frame by 10 millimeters. I use my sp uh, slot cutter because I can get a 10 millimeter depth. The rebate cutter doesn't give me 10 millimeters. It's not enough support for the frame. Particularly if you go for a bigger box, you still need a little bit more support. So you need a deeper, deeper trench. Um, you can cut these on, a, on a, a, a table saw, but I find that if I stick to this, the, the one tool all the time, I'm not fiddling around trying to get, adjust things. Okay, so that's what that is. Now, the other advantage to this, the, the starter pack is that you'll get a DVD or a memory stick with demos on it. So you get a demo DVD for the finger joint if you happen to have a finger joint template on your, on your, your jig or you have a, um, a memory stick with uh, the demo material on it which matches up to what's in your instruction manual. So that's where we go for it. Okay, so all of that sort of stuff. You'll get the all the usual bits and pieces. You'll get you'll get your beer, your rebate cutter. You'll get your um, your jig template cutters. So you get all of that sort of stuff. And it's uh, a really good place to start. So had a brain fade there for a sec. <laughs> um, it's a really good place to start particularly if you don't have any tools at all or you don't and you want to start making boxes and so forth. You can incorporate this into making pieces of furniture, drawer fixing. There's a lots of different things. It's not just around boxes, but it gives you a really good start to what happens with boxes. So have a think about it when you're ready to, to, to purchase something and um, go from there. Now, um, I'm going to end very shortly. Um, Dave Stanton will be starting shortly. He's going to be doing um, thin ripping jigs on uh, table saws and band saws. So it, it, it appears it's going to be a quick and dirty show for him. He's, uh, he's really good at that sort of stuff. So have a little look at it what's if you've got nothing else to do. What's next so next week, next week, we are going to start making the desktop box. Now that might take a couple of weeks to do, 
two or three weeks. Uh, you'll have to bear with me, but we're going to go through the whole process and that will include putting in the sleeves, these little sleeves. So we'll be making those little sleeves as well. They're quite neat little bits and pieces. I just have to work out some materials. So if you're up to starting the boxes, and what we're doing now is we're going to start elaborating our boxes, going to start building bigger and better boxes. I've got you started by making a little pencil box and a lot of those skills will transfer into what we do down the track. Okay, so just, just have a little play with that. It might be a really good starter for you, make very good Christmas presents. Um, particularly for kids who want to put them on uh, the desk or you want to take them to school. Okay, so that's the show today, folks. Um, thank you for, for watching and sorry about the rocky start. We're still learning. We're still uh, getting things um, organised. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, good on you, Brian. I hope you are learning stuff. Dave, uh, yes, D uh, Derek, I'll, uh, next week when we start doing the, uh, the big box, I will um, endeavour to uh, show you how to, to sand off all of the, the, the corners and edges. Um, just didn't have the time today, um, so, but um, we will as we go through the process because this one's going to take a little bit longer, okay? So have a good day, folks. Be nice to each other and I will see you 